Live. All right, hey guys, how's it going this morning? Um, I just wanted to uh, introduce Colby T. He's here to help us this morning. He's gonna worship, uh, do worship with us, man. And so, uh, give it to Colby. <laughs> Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Yeah. Cool that we get to be in the house of God, wherever God is. <laughs> so, today we're going to start with a song. Um, I was praying yesterday, just like, Jesus, I want your song to be on our hearts. Like, how do we join in what you're already singing? Right? And today come to print off the songs, it's not working out too well. And Jamie's like, what, what songs are you gonna sing? Oh, praise the name, she's like, we're singing that next door. And it's just, it's so cool that God's heart and his spirit is consistent, and that he draws us into the things that he cares about. So, let's, uh, let's worship today. <coughs> Oh, yeah. 
So, thanks for, for worship. <laughs> it's, it's a call that we have, um, something that I've been learning. Hallelujah. Let us praise the Lord. And when we say that, it's an invitation for the whole world and all creation to join in singing the things that we're created to do. And what we get to sing about is how deep the Father's love is for us in that he gave his son, who was perfect, who is perfect, who is holy and righteous to become sin on our behalf. And it's just, it's tremendous to think about. My voice is kind of shot. <laughs> Thanks for your grace in that.
let's reserve um, this song for the end of our, of our time of worship mm -hmm. and fellowship. Do you got any water back there? Somebody grab me water, please. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. How is everybody? All right, so uh, we got missions uh, conference coming up this weekend. Uh, we're doing a bunch of things with uh, the Chapel Hill Peaks. Um, and so it's, it's, it's cool because um, I'm even uh, preaching uh, here this morning on, on mission. You know, it's funny how it just kind of happened. Uh, it definitely wasn't planned that way, even though you can go to anywhere as we go through the book of Mark and you can see Jesus on mission and reaching lost and broken people. Um, and so... I just want to take a second, man, like I, I, I can feel this morning, like myself just wanting to get in the way, like all morning I've been waging war on self and, and, and I want nothing to do with it. Um, and, and so I just want to get rid of self. Uh, and so what I would like to do is we got a couple, we got all morning really, right? I mean. So what I would like to do is get a couple volunteers uh, that would like to pray. Jimbo, Pito, and lead us into the throne room. Jesus, uh, we praise you. As Jimmy, uh, as Jimmy prayed, I just argued to Jesus. Let's just say it for this. Uh, I pray this morning, Jesus. That is where we would be. Um, a place of thankfulness, of gratefulness, praise Jesus. Uh, your wounds have paid our ransom. And that we know we had a high price that we couldn't pay, Jesus. So we sit here and we give you glory, God what you've done and what you're continuing to do. Uh, we give you glory for what you're going to speak to us today, Jesus, that it is truth, it is life, it is exactly what your church needs. Uh, would you move in an unusual way in our hearts today, Jesus, that the spirit would penetrate through the walls, uh, through the shadows, through the depths of our hearts, Jesus, uh, that the, the insecurities and iniquities in our hearts would be exposed, that we would lay them at your feet and be made new this morning, King, and that we would leave here closer to you, Jesus. Uh, we trust you, Jesus. We bring our praise and our request to your feet. Wait patiently. Uh, you are unfailing, Lord God, and we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Yeah, King Jesus, uh, just get rid of every bit of self, Jesus, that, that gets in the way of people being saved, that gets in the way of this message, that gets in the way of your glory. Get, get rid of it. I want nothing to do with it, Jesus. You are the authority here. You are so much greater than, than, than me or anybody else in here, Jesus, or the things that we're going through uh, here this morning. And we just want your name to be glorified. We just want to uh, be close to you, Jesus. Uh, we, we just want to hear from you. Like, we just want you. We just want you, Jesus. Um, and, and that's so different um, from anything that I've ever experienced. You know, I, I, I wanted a lot of things, Jesus. I wanted a lot of things. And uh, those things... Uh, were not good for me. Those things were temporary. They didn't last. Uh, they might have brought a, a fleeting pleasure for a moment. But Jesus wanting you and wanting to be close to you and wanting your spirit is something completely different. Jesus, I've experienced that in a completely new way this week. In, in, in a way that you could, I can hardly put into words. And, and, a feeling on the inside, Jesus, that just can't be explained. And in this moment, really, honestly, a peace that, that is, is passing all understanding. Um, and so, Jesus, I want to not just share that experience. I want others to have that here this morning, Jesus. And I believe that you want to answer that prayer. I believe that's a, a, that's a kingdom focus, a kingdom prayer that brings you glory, Jesus. This is, this is your church. This is what you're doing. These are your people, Jesus. And so comfort, encourage, and uplift us here this morning. Give people a peace that they just can't explain. It, it just never gets old. You never get old, Jesus. Uh, I, I've tasted what is good, and I know it to be true, and I'm grateful. I love you, Cain. It's in your name we pray. Amen. <coughs> good morning. So, uh, man, who came in here this morning? Poor in spirit. Like really just poor in spirit, knowing their desperate need for Jesus. Anybody? Yeah. Good. This is what it says, man. I'm just going to, I'm going to start here. Uh, Jesus says, God blesses those who are poor and they re and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those, or God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. And so it's like, man, I pray that as I sit here that we all came in and we realized right off the rip our desperate need for Jesus. That, that, that uh, we're not thinking about self, that we're thinking about others and putting others even above ourselves. That, that Jesus has given us this new, <coughs> this new life. And we can't come to him and have it all. We, we, don't, we, we can't come to Jesus with everything already figured out. You know, I think that as I've moved through this week, I have been on mission with Jesus in a way that I've never personally experienced. Um, and, and I couldn't do it thinking that I had everything together. Just couldn't. I had to come poor in spirit, humble in, in his presence. Allowing him to do what he wanted to do as I was on mission uh, with him this week. And so 
a lot of the, the message is geared this morning towards mission, and I believe that's because that's where Jesus has us as a church as we move towards, uh, you know, uh, our, our conference, missions conference this weekend, and, and where he personally has us as a church where we go through the book of Mark and where we're reaching lost and broken people in a crazy way. If we just think about all the things that have happened and reflect on all the things that have happened over the last month, we have experienced everything that Jesus has been experiencing or experienced as we've been going through the book of Mark. Isn't that crazy? And so, man, just share a couple scriptures with you here that are really on my heart. It says, you lived in this world without God and without hope, hope, but now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. Man, once we had no hope, but as we sit here this morning, we have hope, right? What is that hope? Like I was reminded of that uh, as I was talking to some people before the message. I, I was like, man, what, what's the hope <coughs> that we're talking about? And that hope is the confident hope in Christ and, and, and eternal life with him, right? Where it says that, uh, in Revelations 21, 4, <clears throat> he, will <clears throat> he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And so as we dive into this, we're in the book of Mark. Um, Jesus is doing something really cool as we go through this. He's doing something really cool with you guys. I can see it. He's doing something really cool with uh, me and Billy as we preach through it. Uh, even as I sit up here, um, I, I don't really have any notes. And that's just different for me um, because I usually have like everything kind of planned out or written out or, hey, this is what I've spent time with Jesus. And this is kind of what he wants me to say. Um, but I just through this week didn't really have that time, you know? I mean, I had time with Jesus, but I, it wasn't like I just had time to go jump on the laptop or do this or do that and type all this stuff out. And Jesus the whole time was going, hey, you've been on mission with me. This is, this is in your heart. You know this. Forget the notes. Forget the notes and just preach the message. And so we're in the book of Mark. We're in chapter 2. Um... We're in verses 13 through 13 through uh, 16. And this is what it says. It says, then Jesus went out to the lake shore and again and again or again and taught the crowds that were coming to him. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of uh, Alphaeus. Sitting at his tax collector's booth, follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and followed him. Later, Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable dis sinners. There were many people of this kind among Jesus' followers, but when the teachers of religious law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with tax collectors and other sinners, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he told them, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know that they are sinners. And so, right away, we see Jesus is intention. He's very, he's intentional, and he's on mission. As we even recap, as we go through the through through what we've already covered in Mark, this this in uh, thirteen opens up. Then Jesus went out to the lake shore again and taught the crowds that were coming to him. 
And so there he is again, Jesus. Like I think about uh, the way that I've been stretched this week uh, with everything that I've done. Billy's been gone. Um, I've had to do, you know, what, what would usually be split between me and him, just kind of dumped on my plate. And I was telling Billy before I got up here, um, I was like, man, I'm tired. I was like, I feel like I'm just going to, I'm just going to get up there. I'm just going to give the message that Jesus wants me to give. And at the end of it, I'm probably just going to fall on my face because that's where I'm at. I, I feel like Jesus has done so much with me, uh, through this week. And then I read, uh, uh, where we're at here and it's like Jesus just never stopped this dude just never stopped like he just kept going I mean from the minute we we go back to Mark uh, chapter 1 verse 14 it says later on after John was arrested arrested Jesus went into Galilee where he preached God's good news the time promised by God has come at last he announced the kingdom of God is near repent of your sins and believe in the good news like he starts there and it just doesn't stop it says in 16 one day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee he saw Simon and his brother Andrew throwing that into the water where they fished for a living Jesus called out to them come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people and they left their nets at once and followed him and this is this is Jesus was uh, teaching in the boats here at this point too where he says hey go go out a little bit deeper they let down the nets and they catch all these fish right it moves on verse 21 Jesus and his companions went to the town of Camp Campernon when the Sabbath day came he went into the synagogue and began to teach. I mean, he just never stopped. He's intentional. He's on mission. He came to seek and save those who are lost. The people were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite, like, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. And so we just see Jesus teaching on mission in verse 32 it says that that evening after sunset many sick and demon possessed people were brought to Jesus the whole town gathered at the door to watch so Jesus healed many people who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons and so once again we just see Jesus on mission this dude is non stop and I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about this even as I give the message right now about the things that I did this 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 over this last week and it's nothing compared to the way that Jesus went and was on mission and that's why I said when I first got up here I want nothing more to do with self I want nothing more to do with self I want everything to do with the power of the Holy Spirit because we can go like Jesus went and I want to be there I want to be there and I think that uh, as a church, we should all want to be there also. And so it just keeps going on, right? Uh, before daybreak, the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray, right? When they found him, when they found him, they said, hey, everyone's looking for you. But, G but Jesus replied, what does he say? He says, hey, we must go on to other towns as well. And I will preach to them too. That is why I came. That is why it came. Verse 41, moved with compassion, Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. Instantly, the leprosy disappeared and the man was healed. Then Jesus sent him on his way with a stern warning, right? And this is where he ends up going and, and, and telling, uh, you know, uh, telling everybody about it. And, and, and you cannot contain Jesus's glory. And so just keep moving on, right? And even at the end of that, man, it doesn't say, hey, Jesus, you know, he, he, he just quit. He just stopped the mission, right? It says that he couldn't even go into a public place at this point. And so what does he do? He heads out to the secluded places but people from everywhere kept coming. People from everywhere kept coming. 
Verse 2 of chapter 2. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no room. Even outside the door, you cannot contain Jesus' glory. While he was preaching God's word to him, there he is again on mission. The only thing that matters, the reason that he came, laying hands on people that other people would never touch, the man with leprosy, casting out demons, doing all kinds of crazy things. And as I sit here, I, I just go, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm coming to that realization again as I've been on mission with Jesus this week with everything that's been going on. I can't do it. But I know the one who can. And so Jesus, uh, you know, he, they, they lower this guy in through, through the roof, right? And, 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 and Jesus just doesn't quit, man. Jesus said to the paralyzed man, uh, my child, your sins are forgiven, right? Verse 13, then Jesus went out to the lake shore, read that again, and taught the crowds that were coming to him. And so we just see up to this point, Jesus is just on mission. He's intentional. He's on mission. He's reaching uh, lost and broken people. Verse 14, as he walked along, and saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and followed him. And so things that we went through that, that I don't want to just necessarily give the message that I already gave. But I think it's important to realize that the creator of the universe is in the flesh. And he's calling Matthew to come follow him. And Matthew just gets up and goes, just like the other disciples did. Like, this is the guy that holds the oceans in his hands, man. It's measured off, uh, you know, the heavens with his fingers. That, that if he were to take back his breath, and, 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 or if he were to uh, take back his spirit and withdraw his breath, everything would cease to exist and again return to dust. That's what it says in Job 34, 14. I love that verse. And he's standing here in the flesh, and he's calling uh, Matthew to come follow him. And so, things that we should know I, about Matthew is that he's a tax is he's a tax collector. Um, you know, the crazy thing about that is tax collectors were seriously despised. Uh, they were considered they were considered traitors. Like they were basically in bed with Rome, right? And so Rome's oppressing the Jewish people, right? And, and Matthew, who is a Jew, is working and in bed for the Romans because basically what you could do and what they did was they would, uh, you know, use the Jewish people uh, to, to, collect, to collect the taxes and so, like, say, you know, it's like bidding for a contract, pretty much. Like, you know, you bid really, they would bid, like, really low with Rome, right? So they would bid, like, really low, and Rome would go, oh, wow, that's a really low price. We'll let, we're going to give it to you. You go, ta you go collect those taxes. But what they would do was there was, Rome didn't care what you did after that point. As long as they were getting the money that, that they wanted. So, so they would, they would contract it for super low, but then they would turn around and then they would just extort their own people. And so Matthew was literally extorting his own people, right? And there was like two tax collectors. There was like kind of like the middleman. Uh, there's the tax collector that has like a middleman that kind of like sends them out and he kind of you know, in the shadows almost in a way, kind of like collects the taxes, right? And then you got guys like Matthew who literally set up a booth and extort you as you're walking by. Like this dude was despised. Like he was a traitor, uh, you know, and, and, and here's Jesus goes right to him. Jesus goes right to him. And says, come follow me. That's crazy. And so these, this would have been somebody that would be considered to be 
the worst of the worst. The worst of the worst. And so, no matter who's sitting in here today that thinks, hey, I'm too far away from the reach of God, that is just untrue. Like, Jesus is calling you. I promise you that. We see that here. I mean, he is despised. He is a, he is a complete traitor. And Jesus goes right up to him and calls him to come follow him. says that Levi got up and went. And so a disciple responds. I want to hit on that real quick again as we talk about mission. A disciple responds to the call of Jesus. Okay? He, 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 Jesus says, come, let's go, and you go. Right? Like, it doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what time it is. Jesus says, hey, it's time to go. We're on mission. It's time to go. And so a, resp a disciple responds to the call to follow Jesus. Um, it says later, verse 15, Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners, there were many people of this kind among Jesus' followers, but when the teachers of religious law, who were Pharisees, saw a meeting with tax collectors and other sinners, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with such scum? And so back to mission, when you're on mission with Jesus, there's going to be distractions, there's going to be darkness. Jesus is pushing back darkness here. Like literally, we can just go back. We'll just review that too. It says in verse 12, the spirit then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. 40 days. And so that's where it starts. It goes on to say, um, suddenly a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit. Sorry, I'm in verse 23 and 24. Cried out. Why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus reprimanded him. Be quiet and come out of that man, he ordered. At that, the evil spirit screamed through the man and a convulsion and then came out of him. And so when you're on mission with Jesus, you're, you're fighting back. Darkness. You're called to sick people. And we're getting to that, right? It says that, uh, once again, Jesus on mission, all kinds of things coming against him, right? Then, what does he encounter? He leaves the synagogue where he's just been, uh, you know, teaching. And they go to, sign, they go to Peter's house, mother-in-law's, and she's sick in bed with a high fever. And so they tell her, they tell Jesus about her right away, and he goes right to her bedside, takes her by the hand, and helped her sit up, and the fever left her. And so on the other end of that, guess what? When you're on mission with Jesus, you get to experience Jesus' glory. You get to experience Jesus doing the most amazing things, healing people. I've sat in some things this week that I just didn't think were were. I just thought, I'm like, man, we're just, it's beyond reach. I, I just, I was losing trust in situations and Jesus just showed up and I got to be a part of him doing all kinds of amazing work uh, this week at the men's house and just doing all kinds of different things. And so when you're on mission with Jesus, you see the glory of Jesus. You see the authority of Jesus. You see the healing power of Jesus. You see Jesus take things that, that, that that are that are that that have got darkness to them and bring light to situations. You see people who were oppressed a week ago who have smiles and feel lighter and Jesus is doing things with them. It says that So, so, and it just keeps going on, guys. It says, it, it, it goes back into verse uh, 6 of chapter 2. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, what is he saying? 
This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you question in your hearts? Is it easier to say that the, to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven or stand up, pick up your mat and walk? So I will prove to you that the son of man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Jesus knocks off the hardening of our hearts, man. Like he just, he does things that, that, that these, he came to show, especially the religious teachers, how hard their hearts actually were. Right now, on the other end of that, what you got to think is Jesus is a rabbi himself. He's a teacher himself. And so the simple fact that he goes up to, to, to Matthew is it, crazy because the other they wanted nothing to. They wouldn't even walk down the same same road as Matthew. They would literally avoid that. They would go nowhere near him. And Jesus being a rabbi himself. He, he, he blows what, what, the, what the religious leaders, you know, thought and were thinking. And I can only imagine how we've experienced the same thing. Put yourself in them guys' shoes where this is the way that you've been raised. This is what you think is true. And then you encounter the one and living God. And he flips something on, your head, on his head and you got to go, wait a second. Wait a second. What, what just happened? And, 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 and Jesus brings a whole new clarity to a situation, a whole new thinking, a whole new teaching that is actually true and correct. I mean, this is Matthew that we're talking about, the first book of the gospel. This is the same Matthew that wrote the, first, the very first book. Like, that's what we're saying when you take people that that the world despises or that they think that they're scum of the earth or this or that, Jesus takes them and, and, and he does amazing things with them. And so, Yeah, later Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable, disreputable, I can never hardly say that word. Thank you. There were many people of this kind among Jesus' followers. Man, Jesus is a friend of sinners. Does that mean that light can, can coincide with darkness? No, absolutely not. Jesus is on mission at this point. Jesus literally goes to this place to, to rescue people. To, to snatch people from the plane, from the flames. It's not like he's just there hanging out, being buddy buddy. He, he's there on mission, being intentional, right? And so, this is where we get to where they go, hey, why, 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 why does he eat with such scum? Why does he eat with such scum? And this is what Jesus says, verse 17. He says, when Jesus heard this, he told them, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. And that's why I started off at the very beginning of the message with who came in here knowing that they're poor and that they need Jesus. Who here knows they're sick? Absolutely, right? And so Jesus wants to heal, uh, you know, wants to come into our lives and, and, and clean, us, clean us up. That's the great thing about Jesus is you don't have to come to Jesus and, 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 clean, and be all cleaned up, man. A lot of times we encounter people and they're like, yeah, you know, I got to get this in place, this in place first, and then I can follow Jesus. It's like, no, Jesus wants to meet you right now in your mess, wherever you're at. And so I want to talk a little bit about Jesus's mission, right? That, that um, Jesus came, it says in Luke 19.10, uh, you know, the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost, right? That, that is Jesus's mission. What he's trying 
what, what he's wanting to do is he's wanting to fill everything with himself, right? And so in Ephesians 4, it says, that is why the scripture said, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says he ascended. This clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world. And the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. That is the mission of Jesus that, that everybody in this room would have this, his spirit living in him. It's not just Jesus walking with us, among us now. It's Jesus in us, right? And he's filling everything, everywhere with himself. He is recovering uh, the image that's been broken in this fallen world, right? And so... Not only, not, not only did, did Jesus come to seek and save those who are lost, man, but in Mark 10, 45, it says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and not to give his life, or and, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And that's why I said, who also came in here poor in spirit, but also going, I don't want anything to do with me. Let me put the next guy above me. Like, let me get at somebody's feet. Let me experience what Jesus has. Like, let me be on mission with Jesus. And I can only imagine, you know, I, I mean, you can just read through the book of, of Matthew and, and the things that the disciples uh, experienced and the things that Matthew experienced while he was on mission with Jesus also. And so, Second, uh, second Corinthians Uh, 19 and 20 for God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself no longer counting people's sins against them and I bet you I can only imagine what what Matthew was thinking when Jesus came up to him and said come follow me and he, he, he had new life and that he knew that no longer was his sins being counted against them that, that he was free that he was free. I know I've experienced it. I know there's a lot of people in here that have experienced it. And so he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassador. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. And so we are Christ's ambassadors, guys. Like when we're on mission with Jesus, we've been raised to new life. He's filling everything everywhere with himself. We've been filled with the Holy Spirit. We're, we're, we're on mission. We should be reaching lost and broken people, right? We should be pleading for people to come back to God. I know I've been doing that all, all week. Uh, not that I don't do that all the time, but it's been in a way that I can't even explain to you guys that is so beautiful that, that it's hard to put into words that by the time that I got here to this podium to speak the message that Jesus wanted me to give, that, that I had a piece that you guys can't even understand right now that I wasn't experiencing up to that point because Jesus just wanted me to remain in this place where he's like, you, he wants me right here. He wanted me to be so close to him. And, and that's why I say that's where that peace comes from. That's where that peace comes from. And so it, it's not like we're just out on mission. Uh, it, when you're out on mission with Jesus and you're seeing his authority, you're seeing his healing power, you're seeing the way that he moves, you're seeing, seeing him fill everything everywhere with himself. You are brought close to Jesus. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It, Am I the only one that wants to be close to Jesus? Like, no, like everybody wants that, right? And so it's like, it, there's the answer. It's mission. It's reaching lost and broken people. Uh, and, and it's not what you think it's going to look like. It's sick people. 
that need a doctor. It's not, it, it, it might be getting a call in the middle of the night. It, I don't know. But I promise you that if you, if you do those things, man, you'll experience, the clo you'll experience a crazy closeness to Christ, man, a peace that, that, that's just beyond uh, anything that we can really put into words. Okay, so what's our part in the mission? Our part in the mission is, you know, we, go, we can go back to what Jesus says. And, and, and when I preached on the first disciples in 17, Jesus called out to them, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. That's our part. Our, also our part in Jesus' mission of, of reconciling everybody back, uh, you know, filling everything back uh, filling everything with himself is therefore in Matthew 28 verse 19 therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and so where are you guys at with discipleship you know like we just talked about that uh, in the Worcester leading, lead, uh, meeting leaders meeting um, was hey Check in, see where people are at in their discipleship. It's what's most important that you're discipling and that you're being discipled and making disciples. That, and I love this one. This is, uh, It's not just us doing this in our own strength. Like, you know, like I've experienced that before, man. I, I, I just did a devotional on it like two weeks ago, man, where I talked about, man, we don't have to grind for it anymore, right? Like we got this great, this great power living inside of us and we don't have to try to do things and, and take this thing and this thing and try to put them together, man. We just got to surrender. We just got to give up. We just got to give up our way, right? And, and when you do that, you'll receive power from heaven. Bottom line, Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Acts 9, verse 17 says, I'll just read through 19. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit, the power of God. I mean, this is, uh, you know, Paul's been, been knocked down on the road to Damascus. And, and, and was blinded, right? It says, instantly something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. Afterward, he ate some food and regained his strength. And so it's not just us doing this. And then it says, in the, it says right after that, so Saul, so, Saul, so Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days, and immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue, saying, he is indeed the Son of God. Sound familiar? <laughs> so I don't think it's Paul anymore. It's the Spirit of God leading Paul, right? And so... Man, the results of the mission um, are like what I said in the very in the very beginning, right? That that there'll be no more pain, no more sorrow. When everybody hears the word, Jesus is coming back. That's Matthew twenty four fourteen, right? It says, "Hey, when everybody hears, then he's coming back." And when he comes back, there'll be no more there'll be no more death, sorrow, crying, or pain. Right, it says that, and I'll, I'm going to end on this, guys. It 
It says in Revelations 22, verse 3, no longer will there be a curse upon anything. For the throne of God and the Lamb will be there and his servants will worship him. And they will see his face and his name will be written on their foreheads. And there will be no, there'll be no night. There are no need for lamps or sun for the Lord will shine on them and they will reign forever and ever. Like we can't even begin to start to imagine that. There'll be no need for, for lamp. There'll be no need for night. No need for, for day. Like the glory of the Lord is going to shine and reign on us. And we're going to reign with him forever and ever. And so, I love you guys. There's one right here too. Hold me. I'm sorry. The thought was come on. There it is coming on. Okay. What a beautiful time of just reflection, reflection and remembering that Jesus' love endures. Like the fact that the risen Jesus sends his spirit into us in order to transform our lives. We are all under the knife, right? Like I can testify to specifics that Lego is talking about throughout this last week of experiencing transformation in my heart in ways that I didn't know I needed. But Jesus came for the sick and for those who are dying, and he wants us to be well, and he wants us to be made whole with him. And it's only possible with him and through his action. And so we get to receive <laughs> All, that, all the spiritual blessings that are in Christ, and we get to live that out in a way that invites other people into tasting and seeing how good our God is. That's what living on mission is. That's what Lego's talking about. That's what's beautiful about being woken up in the middle of the night and praying with those who are hurting. So we get to sing a song that we're no longer slaves to the way of this world. We live according to a different economy.